teacher is always going to see you, you know, no matter what he says, just see you. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll start with scripture. So please turn with me, those of you who are following along, those of you who are tuning in, welcome. Uh, we're delighted that you are able to worship with us. So that being said, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And I, brothers and sisters, could not speak to you as spirit-filled, but as worldly, as infants in Messiah. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready. Indeed, even now you are not ready, for you are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and strife among you, Aren't you worldly and walking in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another says, I follow Apollos, are you not mere humans? What then is Apollos, and what then is Paul? Servants, through whom you came to trust, and to each as the Lord gave. I planted Apollo's water, but God gave the increase. So neither one who plants nor the one who waters is anything. Only God who makes things grow. Now he who plants and he who waters work as one, but each will receive his own reward according to his labor. For we are God's co-workers, and you are God's field, God's building. Praise be to God. Amen. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father God, as we continue to move forward in the seasons, uh, as, as Brother James put it, let us hone in on, on you and your direction. Uh, putting ourselves our ego aside and just continuing to walk in faith and in favor with your grace in your hand abounding over us and through us. We pray that all those who are still lost in worldliness, that they see your goodness in our lives and in our example as we journey through the highways and byways and out of those places. We thank you, Father God, for this day. We thank you that your presence will meet us here. And we thank you for the family who has hosted this weekend. We pray this in Yeshua's name and the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Amen.
thanking God for giving us the way to salvation in our Messiah, Yeshua. Yeshua walked among us, filled with your spirit, the only one who ever fulfilled your Torah. He healed the sick and raised the dead. The multitudes of our people sought his touch. He taught as no man with authority. He brought forth the treasures of the Torah. How the children sought him, the lepers he touched and made clean. How the despised and outcast found love and released from their sin. How the hypocrites feared him, whose words uncovered their sin. Despised and rejected, acquainted with grief, he bore the sins of the Israel. All we like sheep have gone astray, turned every one to his own way. Our iniquities were laid upon the king, the sins of the world is burning there. He rose from the dead and opened the way to everlasting life. Praise his name, we are in him, his spirit and powers. New life is ours with joy and peace. Bless you, O Lord of God, who has given us Messiah Yeshua, our King. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of the Messiah. The Lord of God, O my, there are hands that are all along. I share in the time, while you are yet to interact, how Yeshua, or Mashiach, Yeshua. Bless you, O Lord of God. King of the universe who has given us the way of salvation in the sight of Krishna. Amen.
Shake off the dust. Arise, dress in garments of glory, my people. Through the son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, redemption draws near to my soul. Come, my beloved. Wake up, wake up, for your light has come. Awaken, awaken, sing a song, for the glory of the Lord is revealed to you. Come, my beloved. The Amidah. The Amidah are standing prayers, the oldest of our traditional prayers, going back to the early Second Temple times. There are many parts of the Amidah. And some of the Shabbat portions differ from the weekly portions. Please stand if possible. Adonai Fiata Kisa Ufia Kisenka. My Lord, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Abo, patriarchs, blessed are you, O Lord our God, the God of our forefathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Yaakov. The great, great, mighty, mighty and awesome, awesome God, the supreme God, God, who bestows beneficial kindnesses and creates everything, who, who recalls, recalls the kindness of the patriarchs and brings, brings the Redeemer to their children's children, 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 children for his, his name's sake, sake of love. O King, Helper, Savior, and Shield, blessed are you, O Lord, Shield of Abraham. Amen. 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 Give her with God's might. You are eternally mighty, my Lord. The one who restores life from the grave, greatly able to save. save. Be sustained in the living kindness. Revives the dead with abundant mercy. Supports the fallen. Heals the sick. Releases the confined. And maintains faith to those asleep in the dust. Who is like you, O Master of mighty deeds? And who is comparable to you, O King, who causes death, restores life, and makes salvation sprout? And you are faithful to bring that life from the dead. Blessed are you, O Lord. Revives the dead. Hashem Kadosh, the holiness of God. <coughs> you are holy, and your name is holy. And the Holy One will praise you every day forever. Blessed be the Lord, the Holy, holy God. God. And Hobu. Hobu Adonai ki
what his name proclaims to be. And after all has ceased to be, he alone will reign in awesomeness. And he was and he is and shall be eternally in glory. And he is first and there is no second to compare to him, to be his equal, without beginning and without end. This is the power and the dominion. <coughs> and he is my God, my living redeemer, and the rock of my feet in times of trouble. And he is my banner and a refuge from me, a portion of my cup in the day I call upon him. In his hands I entrust my spirit, in the time I sleep or am awake. And with my spirit and my body, the Lord is with me. I shall not fear. Amen. Amen. Um, if you would please, um, if you're already standing, please stand and join me for the Shema. Um, as we face east in the direction of Jerusalem and come right in the middle of the question. Shema. Children of Israel forever, 
For six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was with us. From Shemot Exodus 31, 16. <coughs> you did not give it, O Lord our God, to the nations of the land, so that you may give the inheritance our king of the worshippers of graven idols. For to Israel your people have you given it in love, to the seed of your folk whom you have chosen. <coughs> the people that sanctify the seventh, they will all be satisfied and delighted from your goodness. And the seventh, you found favor in it and sanctified it. Most coveted of days, you called it a remembrance of the act of creation. Our God and the God of our fathers, may you be pleased with our rest. Sanctify us with your commandments and grant, us, and grant our share in your blood. Satisfy us from your goodness and gladden us with your salvation and purify our hearts to serve you in the O Lord our God, with love and favor, grant us your holy Shabbat and heritage. And may Israel be sanctified to be our name rest on us. Blessed are you, O Lord, who sanctifies the Shabbat. Amen. Amen. Um, as we continue this prayer service, we need to show respect to the word of God before it is brought out by faith in the soul of Amos' confession, standing for the reading of Torah and participating in the service. <coughs> there is none like you, O Lord, among the gods that are worshipped, and there are no deeds like you. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. For us in mercy, let your goodness be a blessing to Zion, and let Jerusalem be rebuilt. In you alone do we trust the sovereign God, high in his love, the Lord of all the world. And it came to pass whenever the ark was born, Moshe would say, Rise up, Lord, and scatter your enemies, and may those who hate you run from you. For I will go forth as Zion, the Lord's work in Jerusalem. Let them receive what his holiness is, for us must be born to us.
Now Sarah's life was 127 years, the years of Sarah's life. Sarah died in Hebron, in the land of Canaan. Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep over her. Then Abraham rose from before his dead one and spoke to the sons of Heb, saying, I am an outsider and a sojourner among you. Give me a grave site among you, that I may bury my dead from before my presence. The sons of Heb answered Abraham, saying to him, Listen to us, my Lord. You are a prince of God among us. Bury your dead in the best of our graves. None among us will withhold his grace from you to bury your dead ones. Then Abraham got up and bowed down to the people of the land, of the sons of Heth, and spoke with them, saying, If you are of a mind to let me bury my dead before, from before my presence, listen to me. Plead with, the, with Ephron, son of Zophar, on my behalf that he may give me the cave of Machpelah that belongs to him, that is at the end of the field. At the full price, let him give it to me in your midst for your grave site. Now Ephron was sitting in the midst of the sons of Heth, and Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham in his ear, in the ears of the sons of Heth, all those who enter the gate of this city, saying, No, my lord, listen to me, the field I hereby give to you, also the cave that is in it, I hereby give it to you in the eyes of the sons of my people. I hereby give it to you, bury your dead ones. Then Abraham bowed down before the people of the land and spoke to Ephron, in the ears of the people of the land, saying, But if only you would listen to me, please listen to me. I hereby give you the price of the field. Accept it from me that I may bury my dead one there. So Ephron answered Abraham, saying to him, My lord, listen to me. A land worth 400 shekels of silver, what is that between me and you? Bury your dead one. Abraham heard Ephron, so Abraham weighed out to Ephron the silver that he had spoken of in the ears of the sons of Heth, 400 shekels of silver at the merchant's rate. Now Ephron's field that is in Machpelah next to Mamre, the field and the cave that is in it, and all the trees that are in the field in the surrounding territory, was handed over to Abraham as a purchased possession in the eyes of the son of Heth, for, for all the city, those who entered the gate of his city. Afterward, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of Machpelah next to Mamre, that is Hebron. 
in the land of Canaan, so that the field and the cave that was in were handed over to Abraham as a grave site from the sons of heaven. Amen. Amen. Praise Hashem for our mother Sarah. I just wanted to give honor to her because um, she's a good example to us of, you know, those of us who want to be the bride of Yeshua. She followed Abraham and, you know, was always his help me, and that's what we're called to be in this earth for Yeshua. Praise Hashem for Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of Torah, given us the Torah of truth, and planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. As we lift up the Torah for all the people who just proclaimed, we point to the Torah with our pinky fingers. This demonstrates that we are little in the presence of Hashem and His word is what we can do. Horsemen and fifty men to run before him. 
His father had not scolded him at any time by asking, Why have you behaved this way? He was also a very handsome man, and he was born after Absalom. So he conferred with Joab, son of Zeruiah, and with Abiathar, the Kohen. Following Adonijah, they supported him. But Zadok the Kohen, Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, Nathan the prophet, Shimei, Frey, and David's mighty men were not on Adonijah's side. Then Adonijah sacrificed sheep, oxen, and fattened cattle by the stone of Gohila, which is beside Enrogel, and invited all his brothers, the king's son, and all the men of Judah, the king's servants. But he did not invite Nathan the prophet, Benaiah, the mighty men, or Solomon. But Nathan spoke to Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, saying, Haven't you heard that Adonijah, son of Haggith, has assumed the kingship? And our Lord David doesn't know it? Now come, please let me give you advice. Take your own life and the life of your son Solomon. Go at once to King David and say to him, My Lord the King, haven't you sworn to your handmaid, saying, Surely your son Solomon will become king after me, and he will sit on my throne? Then why does Adonijah reign? Behold, while you are still there talking with the king, I will come in after you and confirm your words. So Bathsheba went to the king into the chamber. Now the king was very old, with Abishah the Shunammite serving the king. Bathsheba bowed and prostrated herself to the king. The king asked, What troubles you? She said to him, My lord, you spoke by Adonai your God to your handmaid. Surely Solomon your son will be king after me, and he will sit on my throne. Yet now, behold, Adonai shall reign, though you do not know it. My lord the king, he has sacrificed oxen, fattened cattle, and sheep in abundance, and has invited all the king's sons, Abiathar the Kohen, and Joab the commander of the army, but he has not invited Solomon your servant. As for you, my lord the king, the eyes of all Israel are on you, to tell them who shall sit on the throne of my lord the king after him. Otherwise it will come to pass, when my lord the king sleeps with his fathers, that I and my son Solomon will be considered traitors. Then behold, while she was still talking with the king, the prophet Nathan came in, and they informed the king, saying, Behold, the prophet Nathan is here. When he came in before the king, he prostrated himself before the king with his face to the ground. Then Nathan said, My lord the king, did you say, Adonijah shall be king after me, and he shall sit on my throne? For he has gone down today, slain oxen, fattened cattle, and sheep in abundance, and has invited all the king's sons, the captains of the army, and now the author of the Kohen. And behold, they are eating and drinking with him, and they are saying, Long live King Adonijah. But he did not invite me, your servant, Zadok the Kohen, Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, or your servant Solomon. Was this thing done by my lord the king without letting your servants know who should sit on the throne of my lord the king after him? Then King David answered and said, Summon Bathsheba to me. So she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. Then the king swore an oath, As Adonai lives, who has redeemed my soul out of all distress, as surely as I swore to you by Adonai, the God of Israel, saying that your son Solomon will be king after me and will sit on my throne in my place. Thus I will surely fulfill it this day. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the ground and prostrated, prostrated herself before the king and said, Let my lord king David live forever. Amen.
the trustworthy God who says and does, who speaks and makes it come to pass. All of his words are true and righteous. Faithful are you, O Lord our God, and faithful are your words, for not one of yours is turned back unfulfilled. For you are a faithful and compassionate God and King. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, the God who is faithful in all his words. Amen.
Return us over to you, and we shall return. Renew our days as in the days of old. And may he who blessed our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov, bless all of those who have come to honor God in the Torah. May the Holy One send blessings upon them and upon their families and upon all the works of their hands. Amen. 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 May our eyes behold your return to Zion in compassion. Blessed are you, O Lord, who restores his presence to Zion. Amen. Sing shalom. Grant peace, goodness, and blessing, grace, kindness, and mercy to us and to all your people in Israel. Bless us, our Father, all of us together through the light of your presence. Truly, through the light of your presence, God and I, our God, you gave us a Torah of life, love of kindness, justice, and blessing, mercy, life, and peace. May you see fit to bless your people Israel at all times, at every hour, with your peace. Shabbat Shabbat, inscribe us for life, blessing, peace, and prosperity, remembering all your people Israel for life and peace. Blessed are you, Adonai, source of peace. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable before you, Adonai, my rock and my redeemer.
praise God for your arrival safely. And we thank the families that have been faithful to host the Sabbath service without, throughout these past weeks, right? From the Peña household to the Chavez household, we thank you guys for hosting. Uh, and may God keep his hand ever attentive over your households and over your lives. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the drosh today. Amen? Amen. So two things, two things that happen. Oh, Brother Steve, you come forward and pray for the tithing. Thank you, sir. When you, hello, when you get a chance, look up Malachi 310. That's the reading I generally do for the uh, offering, but we utilize my device to uh, do the live stream today. So Malachi 310, when you get a chance. Heavenly Father God, we come to you today to give thanks praise you and to glorify your word and your and the Messiah you sent forth. Please bless this offering that we are getting ready to take up and bless the hands of those who are able to give and those that cannot give for whatever reason. Please bless them so that they may be able to contribute in, in some way, shape, form, or fashion. We pray these things and give you thanks. In the name of your son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. 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 The link to donate online will be in the comment section here shortly. transformation in just a year, right? We see that God sends a visitor to Abraham and Sarah, right? Yes. And the visitor pronounces to Sarah that she would, in fact, give birth to the promised child, the child that would carry on the covenant, right? Yes. And she laughs. 
in almost disbelief. Like this could, this is too good of a declaration for it to be true. How could I, in my old age, And, and yet we have this problem all the time with people and they're deciding to walk with God or they're deciding to do what is right. Well, I'm too old. Or in little sister's case, I'm too young. Who's going to listen to me? I'm too young. Right? And over and over again we see this throughout humanity. I'm too old, I'm too young. I, I don't have a pedigree, I didn't go to the right college. Yeah. And yet over and over again we find that God chooses yeah. those things, those people, not for their arrogance, not for their but for their humility. Why does God choose people for their humility? Amen? Amen. No, not everybody agrees with that? So, do you think God chooses somebody for their humbleness or their arrogance? <coughs> humbleness. humbleness. Are you sure? Yes. It's not because, you know, uh, one of the brothers walks around with a giant S on his chest and, <laughs> and, and flexes with every move. He isn't choosing them because of that? No, no. No, right? He, he chooses people because they know who they are in God. They don't have to boast about it. And the boasting that they do, do they do is about God, right? Yes. So Sarah continued her laughter. From the time that it was declared that she would have a promised child until the time she delivered the promised child, she continued the laughter. But the laughter changes. It goes from disbelief to, <laughs> no, not me. I couldn't lead, I couldn't read the Torah, I couldn't, you know, and on and on it goes, right? Yes. I want you to take it personally today. Think about something that you said that, no, not me. Oh, ouch. Right? And how many times have you said that? I mean, I look around the room here, and we have uh, a sister who's a goodbye who said, no, not me. <laughs> we have a sister who's leading in, in the part of the Cantor team who said, no, not me. Right? No, she never says, no, not me. <laughs> she never says, no, not me. But over and over again, we have this happen where people say, no, not me, I'm not good enough, I'm not Jewish enough, I'm not qualified enough. But let, let me get to the brass tip. What does it mean to be a Jew? What does it mean to be a Jew? I asked this question because years ago, a dear friend of ours, he had done the genealogy thing, right? You know, you spit in the cup and you send it away and it comes back and it tells you all this stuff about who you are and who your great uncle or aunt were and all these interesting things. But he got his test back and it had 0.0.0% Jewish in his blood. He was heartbroken. I mean, he, he knew Hebrew, front and back, he knew the whole bit, right? And so I was troubled that he was hurt by this, right? Nobody likes to see a brother hurt. So I, I looked it up on every single, I was, not every, nine out of ten of the Jewish study sites. Nine out of ten, when you ask, what is a Jew? What do you think it says? What do you think? Jews or something? Yeah. No. Does it believe? No. No. The core definition of what makes a person a Jew is someone who will take up and follow the ways of God. This is the core. A person who will take up and follow the ways of God above the ways of the world. 
Amen. So in its core, that's it. And yes, it, they get into genealogy throughout trying to figure out who and what you will do and be. But the core, even of those people, is someone who will take up and follow the ways of God. In the same way that Messiah did before us, in the same way that Sarah did before us, <coughs> and David did, did before us, right? Yes. So what is the core? What is the root? Someone who will take up and follow the ways of God. This is the root. And this is what you and I need to put into practice. Not just for our sakes, but for the future generations, like the young lady who read today. Right? At some point, she will have her own family and her own circle of influence. And let it be that she is influencing them in a godly manner. Amen. So Sarah's laughter was turned to satisfaction, to peace, to comfort, because of her faithfulness and her patience. These were some of her strongest virtues. No matter what the circumstances, God will remain faithful to his children who believe. And if it is God's will, he will fill the desires of their hearts. Amen? Amen. So what is Sarah's, one of Sarah's greatest virtues? Patience. Patience. That and she didn't betray who she was. She could have slept with Pharaoh, right? Mm -hmm. There was the opportunity. Sarah, Abraham had already denied who she was to him. She was a sister. But she stuck to being virtuous. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. She stuck to being faithful. And it and anybody can tell you this, that, that has a partner, or even children. It takes something to go along with somebody else's dream, right? Abraham tells Sarah, God says we have to leave my father's house. And she says, okay, let's go. Yeah, and, you know, I, I don't want to leave the, uh, you know, the speaker behind. I, I, don't <laughs> want to, I have to take a little item in my pocket just to be safe. You don't know what's out there. She didn't do any of that, right? We fast forward to one of the other matriarchs, and they did just that. Mm -hmm. They left Laban's house. And who the favorite wife, Rachel, she takes. An idol in her belongings, right? Yes. Sarah didn't take anything. She says, okay, husband, this is what you have been told by God. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do this. Amen. And over and over again, victory after victory, Sarah saw it through. She grieved, yes. She struggled, yes. Who in here doesn't grieve or struggle every now and again? Probably everybody except for the younger people. Right? But we all have moments that we grieve and we struggle. Right? Yes. Let us learn from Sarah and even David. That you'll go along with God wholeheartedly doing what you're supposed to as your portion. Mom. He does his portion. It is up to us to effectively carry out ours. Right? Not just talking about our faith. Not just sharing our faith. But being an example of it. Yes, doing it. Thank you. Goodbye. Hello, goodbye. <laughs> The nature of Sarah changed. And the Lord visited unto Sarah as he had said. And the, Lord, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. 
And Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age. And Sarah said, I mark this day, for God has made me laugh. Other translations say, so God, I, I praise God for this day. He has made me rejoice. All this time, all this time that she's been faithful, and now she's rejoicing in God. Amen. You and I, we will have our, our moments to rejoice, and to declare the goodness of God, and to share those with, with others. Right? We're blessed to be in blessing, right? So we'll have moments where we get to do this. But in that, as you're going through the struggle like that, Remember the promise of God. It, it is said in Scripture that we have to make our case known unto the King. Right? So that means sometimes we have to remind God of His Word. Is it that He forgot? No. When we have to remind God of His Word, is it that He forgot? No, He did not forget. Why do we have to remind Him that? Nobody? Nobody? You're quiet today. <laughs> it's not a reminder for him, it's a reminder for us. That's it, it's a reminder for us. But he says, make your case, child. Mm. Tell me what it is that you want to say and why you think you want to say it. Right? What is it that you want to ask? Make your case to God. Wow. And all who hear, God has made me laugh or made me rejoice. And all who hear will also rejoice. So that was Sarah's point, right? Is that through her testimony, through her goodness, through her virtue, others will rejoice in God. Mm. <coughs> now let's turn the page. We'll get over to David a little bit, very little bit, because we've spent all day on David alone. But it's not solely his week. The strength of David is that he's courageous. He trusts God beyond doubt for protection. He didn't trust in his spear and the chariots and the bows and the arrows and the slings and the, the swords, the Goliath sword that he now had in his collection. He didn't trust in any of those things. He trusted in that God would make a way. That God would make a way to have this victory. In 1 Samuel verse, chapter 17, verse 36 and 37, David testifies to King Saul that your servant has killed both lion and bear. Any, any uncircumcised Philistine will be like the lion and the bear because they have defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will indeed give me victory from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul Amen. said unto David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. And surely he was. Amen? Amen. Amen. Those who trust in the Lord who knows the rest of the verse? Or renew their strength. Huh? Or renew their strength. Or renew their strength. Who walk in that go weary. Who will go into the mountain. Amen. I invite two of you in here. know that. I think it was these two sisters. So Sarah, Sarah, is, Sarah is the first time that we see 
the expression of rejoicing in God throughout the Torah. It's the first time that it happens. But why is that the first time that that happens? Because of long suffering? Close. It happens, it happened, we'll go back to the beginning of this, this season, okay? Let's go back, let's go all the way back to the beginning of Bereshit. Who do we find in Bereshit? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, right? So, there we have Eve, and a serpent showed Eve that she could follow her own desire. Right? Here, somebody, somebody turn to the verse for me, okay? Right. In Genesis, with the snake and Sister Eve. Are you there? Say amen. Amen. You there? Oh, okay. All right. Oh, your proxy, amen. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we have, what does the serpent say to Eve? What does he say to her? Chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 2. What does he say to her? Did God really say not to eat with any of the trees? Did he eat? Right? Did Somebody read that. Where are we there? Sorry. Yes. Um, and the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, and shall you touch it, lest you die. Keep going. Um, then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat it, of it your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing so good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave okay. her husband with her and he ate. Thank you, sister. So she saw that the tree was desirable, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the first phrase, right? Desirable. So she now had the desire to seek after her own interests, right? Yeah. I want to be like God. I want to know all like God. Do you? Can you handle that? It was you the can't. original gas line. Huh? It was the original gas line. Yeah. yeah. That what? <laughs> that, the whole gas lighting thing? That Hasatan was the original gas light. He's like, oh, did he really say that? You know, mm -hmm. trying to mess with their head. So, we, we have Eve going on with it, right? You're right. That does look good. Right? And so we have what enters in here is the sense of self. The sense of what I want, what I need, what I think is best. No, don't worry God, I've got this. Right? You can't even plan out three days in advance. What makes you think you're... Anyway, moving on. <laughs> So the serpent showed Eve that one could experience a sense of self, and she did. It was desirable to her eyes, right? Yes. She deemed it good for food. Let's go. I'm not trying to bash Eve, by the way. I don't, don't get that misunderstood. She is she is a, a loving uh, matriarch. Okay. Fulfilling one's own desire and pleasure argued the snake, the serpent, is the way that joy can be achieved. But is that true? Can you achieve true joy by seeking after your own interests? No. Huh? By going after what you desire? No. Can you get real joy that way? You're going to be never fulfilled. Right? You're always chasing something. Oh, wait, the latest Pepsi's at the store. I gotta go. <laughs> right? It's always something that you're going to be chasing. 
<laughs> You're always going to be chasing something that the world counts as the greatest thing. Yep. So unfortunately, experiencing this sense of ego results in tragic consequences. In a matter of just a few generations, humanity had deteriorated and the world was filled with moral corruption. What, 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 why was everybody morally corrupt? Because they were all seeking after their own interests, their own lusts, their own desires, their own purposes, not God's purposes, theirs. How often do we put our agenda ahead of God's? All the time. Every day. Don't worry, God, don't worry. And as soon as I get these, these, this truck loaded, I'm all yours. The problem with that is that there's always something else you need to put in the truck, isn't there? Yes. Never quite complete because there's always something you have to add on. There's always something you've got to add in. Know something. Those who trust in the Lord shall be satisfied. Amen. So the world was moral, was filled with moral corruption, and God brought the flood upon the earth. And when Sarah gave birth to her son Isaac, and his name means laughter, yes. Joyful laughter, right? Or rejoicing, right? She modeled the transformation from pain to joy, not only for herself but for everyone around her. The Torah relates, Sarah said, God has made for joy for me. Whoever hears will rejoice over me. So she's pronouncing joy over your life. But the way for you and I to get that eternal joy is for us to pursue the things of God in the way that God said. Not necessarily in the way that we think, right? Sarah teaches us in order to transcend the ego, which stifles joy, stifles joy. Well, let me get back to the other question. Can ego bring true joy? No. No. Why? Because it still comes from human heart. <coughs> it comes from a human heart, right? Desire. Desire. These people become so full of themselves they can't see what's good and bad. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I once knew a, a clergy person. I, I still know them, I shouldn't say the ones. They're, they're, not, they're still with us. Uh, I mean, they're still on this side of existence. Uh, so, sometimes they would fall into errors because they would be so stuck in a position of clout that they couldn't sometimes go along with what is right because it might damage the image that they had been given, right? Mm -hmm. They had risen to a, a status and to do certain admissions could possibly damage them. And that is a tragedy when we get so off focus. Mm -hmm. We must never forget that first we are servants. Yes. Amen. It doesn't matter the title. You're a servant first, a child of God first. Yep. Before anything else. <coughs> right? Before anything else, you're a servant of God. And you have to make that distinction in your life. You can be a servant of the world, or as Yeshua tells his very disciples, sons of the adversary, or you can be sons of God. But there is no middle ground there. Right? 
You choose life or you choose death. That's your choice. As much as Rebecca and I or, or anybody else try and encourage you or they want to push you along the way or whatever it may be, ultimately you still have to choose. No amount of pushing or encouraging or anything else, you have to choose. Mm-hmm. Amen. Let me go further on. So Sarah declares that everyone should rejoice. She teaches us that in order to transcend the ego, which stifles joy, one must transcend oneself by becoming part of a greater story, a greater mission. A mission to carry out a divine purpose. Let me say this again, to transcend yourself, your ego, you must become part of the greater story. You must become part of the kingdom. There are no lone rangers in the kingdom. Even Yeshua had 12 disciples. He wasn't a solo act. Moshe had way too many. <laughs> right? So much you complain to God sometimes about them. These people you've given me. I always find that funny because they're his very people, right? He was born from them. <laughs> was like, I have a cousin, and one year uh, my wife and I we were at a, at a gala, and we ran into our co- my cousin there. And mind you, my cousin, he's Hispanic, and he just came back from Alaska, and he turns to my wife and I, and he says, oh my gosh, there's so many Hispanics here. (laughs) (laughs) And I, what? And he is Hispanic, right? He he looks it, he's, you know, the whole bit. (laughs) That always always kind of gives me a good one to think about it. In the same way that Moshe's statement to God about those people gives me a giggle. So the Torah describes how Isaac went out into the field. Now there is a popular debate going on. What was Isaac doing in the field? Because the Torah is not crystal clear on it. And it's not supposed to be. Before you start unrolling the scroll and thinking that this is a grammatical error, there's not. It's supposed to be that way. Okay? So what was Isaac doing in the field? Anybody? Let's go around the room really quick. Uh, back there, you on the phone. Why was Isaac in the field? <laughs> he was giggling. Okay, next. Why was Isaac in the field? Uh, I would say maybe he was working. Working? Okay, what, the about what about you? <laughs> You're shaking his head no. What about you? Working. Working. All right, you stole his answer. You can't steal his answer. <laughs> <laughs> you stole mine. Praying to God. You're meditating, praying to God. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> you can't take your sister's answer. <laughs> I'm just praying. I'm praying to you. Oh. <laughs> oh. What was he in the field? Sunday. No idea. Okay. How about uh, Elder? What was he in the field? Worship. Worship. Okay. Goodbye. I was going to say something similar. (laughs) (laughs) It appears we have a synagogue full of answer stealers here. (laughs) Answer (laughs) stealers. Okay. So let me let me go for it. Maybe he was checking out the field. He was laughing. Maybe he was checking out the field to see what he had to work with. Okay. He was looking at the field, see what he had to work with. So let me get into some of the, the, what the rabbis throughout the centuries have said that he was doing, okay? They're not answer stealers, right? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so and they get this from, from the word that it's used for his being in the field. Lasua. So the word Lasua 
it, they, they try and find root words that are relative to it. Commentator Abram Ezra says that he was going for a walk. Okay. Nahmanides says that he was talking. He was out in the field talking with his friends. But the Torah doesn't mention any friends, right? It doesn't say that Isaac was there with a group of guys. It says Isaac was in the field, right? But let me go further on. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, Rambam says that Isaac, the word that's used is related to a, a plant or a shrub. That he was out there planting. He was out planting in the field. Rashi uses Psalm 102 to explain what Isaac was doing. The prayer of a lowly man when he is faint and pours forth his plea before the Lord. So Rashi says that he was pleading his case to God. Seeking to understand why Isaac was out there, the medieval rabbis come up with a song. And this is how they they describe his relation to the field. And if you want to look it up in your own time, the, the psalm is called A Single Blade of Grass. I encourage you to look it up on your own. It is, it is, a, it is a very, uh, it is a nice song. Okay? So the, the the song goes like this, to know each and every blade of grass, and each one have their own song. The solitude, the companionship, the action, the prayer. There is no way to respond to the challenges. We must, we all must choose our own path. But each and every one of these interpretations, could be said to be a reflection of each phase of our life. Amen? So let's, let's look at those again. I hope you're all paying attention. Uh, so one translation was, he was what? Anybody? Come on. Okay, guys. Don't make me have to do all this over again. Okay, ready? He was walking. He was walking. What's the other, what the other one say? He was talking to a friend. Alright, gather with his friends. He was making his case. He was pleading. What's the other one? He was planting, right? He was planting. But each one of these interpretations are different times in our lives almost, right? Yeah. Wow. Right? There are times where we are going to share the goodness and the joys of God with our friends with strangers, with people in H-E-B, or in your case, um, big lots. Okay? There, there are times when we are going to have to sit and work and put seed into the ground. Amen. Right? Then there are times when we are going to have to walk in God's goodness. Walk in, his, in the trust of God. And that is a huge thing for most people. Yeah. Because their self, their ego is constantly screaming out, No! But let's just go get alone. Let's just go do this. Let's just go, go do that. Right? You know, this, 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 this life of faith isn't working out. We can go, they're hiring $15 an hour. That would be good. Right? The ego is always trying to persuade you to go away from the way of God. Amen? Amen. Mm-hmm. 
David's greatest virtue is that he trusted in God above all and everything else. So each and every interpretation, is any of them more correct than the others? No. No. No, they're all they're all accurate, right? Yes. It's the perspective of where you're standing at whatever point you're on in your path, right? And that's something that's important for you to understand is that where you are in your journey, on your path, it's not going to be the same place that anywhere one else is in their journey, right? <coughs> their path and their journey is unique to them. And you may have similar things that you can help identify each other, help to edify faith for each other, help to encourage and lift each other up out of things but it is still unique to you and to them. This is why at the very end of this very Bible, one of the seven virtues of being messianic, oh, you don't know the virtues, okay, this time. We'll go over there this time. But one of the main ones in there is that as <coughs> messianics, we celebrate one another's victories. But the flip side of that, we mourn each other's losses, right? Yes. If Steve stubs his toe, we're all going to think he's okay, mm -hmm. right? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> rub, rub some dirt on it, walk it off, and hydrate. But the point is, just like when, when we go celebrate, we're all quick to celebrate somebody's birthday, but when somebody's in the hospital, people kind of eke in there, right? We call the celebration of victories, mourn each other's issues, right? Yes. So this is what we do. We help bear one another's burdens and rejoice in the King when we do have victory. So every blade of grass has its own song and its own path. And each of us must also choose our own way. Every interpretation that was said can be interpreted as different phases of our lives. In each, in each we need to apply prayer, work, fellowship, and sharpening one another up. Yes. We also have to include the DACA. Yes. yes. And understand, let me be clear about this, the DACA is not always money. That's right. Right? Somebody that needs a hand moving, <laughs> they don't need you throwing two shekels at them. <laughs> they need you to put your hands and go help them out. Right? Yes. Yes. So that's the DACA. It has nothing to do with money. Right? Amen. You know, when, when, the, when the disciples <laughs> misinterpreted that, and they thought that they should just keep fishing and keep feeding people, Yeshua scolded them. He said, no, the greater mitzvah is to teach them. Right? Yes. Teach them how to fish. Teach them how to fish. Teach them how to feed others. That they may teach others how to fish also. And on it goes, right? Because it's not just for us. It's for generations. Yeah. It's for generations. It's for the kingdom. Yeah. Return to Isaac, the Torah tells us that he indeed ultimately finds comfort for which he is searching. Rebecca is his comfort. She becomes a source of support and love for him. Where do you get your source of 
comfort and support from? Wow. Is it from godly things? Or is it from something secular? God. 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 See, people say that, right? You don't say that maybe because you're here. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You leave here, turn on your, your base system, and start bumping down the highway. <laughs> <laughs> Basing <laughs> <laughs> worship music? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, in this week's portion, we have two great people who went on to the next existence. Right? Yes. And one of the details <laughs> is that Aunt Sarah lived. Mm. Amen. Right? Yes. If you understand that, you understand everything. Her flesh may have retired, but she lived. lived. Right? She lived. She went beyond. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, this week, apply the lessons, whether it's of David trusting in God, no matter how dire it may seem. Open your eyes to see the, the foothold that he sets out before you. Or with Sarah, rejoicing in God, even when it seems like his promise isn't going to happen. Rejoicing in God anyway. It's your choice this week, this season, what you will do. But as I said in the beginning, the way to receive, the way to true godly joy is by serving beyond yourself. Yes, amen. Serve the kingdom, serve the kehila, whatever assembly you're part of, serve. I, I said this before and I'll say it again. Ishka and I, we served for over 10 years where we were. Faithfully. We, we didn't talk about or talk negatively about anybody who was in leadership over us. Even still to this day. Because they are God to deal with. Not mine. Mm-hmm. They don't eat at my table. I don't pay for their tuition or anything else. So, we leave things that we can't control, we give those fully over to God's hands. Wow. Amen? Amen. We praise the King. We offer a hand up to brothers and sisters, near or far. And we praise the King. And we praise the King. Praise the King and we praise the King. Yes, amen. So keep praising the King. Keep declaring His goodness. Even when you can't see a way, know that He is faithful to make a way. Amen? Amen. And with that being said, thank you for your time. May Hashem bless each and every one of you fully. Let's go ahead and, uh, aha. Oh, it would be my distinct privilege to invite Sister Elaine and Brother Eli up here to do the yarn. Can you get it? I'll give it a shot. Okay, all right. If it's strong, we'll give them. We'll know uh, later. Can, can I do it? Bring your head covering. Oh, oh, I have one. Okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Okay. Okay. Go.
gather the the, net, the future leaders of faith. Um, that means you know me. Okay, if we can gather all the future leaders right here for this relief. Those of you at home, go ahead and gather your your children under your police or within your arms if you don't have the police. Okay. They say, Hi, Elohim, Ke Ephraim, Gachem, Manasseh. May God make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. <laughs> May the Lord protect and defend you. May He always shield you from shame. May you come to be in Israel a shining name. May you be like Ruth and like Esther. May you be as Ephraim.
So dedicate yourself to being the light of the world. We're bringing forth the light of the world. Amen? Okay. Okay. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, one more time. Amen? Amen. Amen.